Hey XDA, Lance Seidman coming at you from, well, home. Shocking, isn't it? A programmer from home. Nonetheless, we're going to be making a Windows Phone app. Uh, probably several, and you're going to learn basically to make it from file, new project, to, well, OAuth, and, well, using JSON and uh, real live APIs. Uh, and we're going to make apps. We're not going to do, oh, this, blah, 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 No, we're making apps, people. Uh, it's time you learned. Windows Phone, we're coming at you. We're not dying. As long as we're making an eighth appearance. Revolution! But nonetheless, guys, let's do it. You can complain in the comments. I know you will. You'll tell me my hair doesn't look right. It's all right. You know, it really doesn't matter. Oh, and, uh, and I apologize for not having uh, a great uh, place to film. Get over it. My lighting sucks. Well, now you know what to expect for videos from me. You see, oh, Windows Phone lands. Uh, so, enough of the jokes. Let's make an app. Windows Phone 7, 7.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.8, 8. We're going to be making a Mac uh, lookup uh, app uh, for Windows Phone 7. Now, obviously, you see I built the UI, which is user interface for those who may or may not know that. Uh, but as you can see, if we go into the example.cs, there is no coding. We need to build some coding. Just simply go to Tools library package manager and new get package for solution that's again assuming you've already installed this and let's type json there we go json.net we know it's correct because it says newton soft uh james uh newton king so we'll go ahead and click install uh we make sure that it's check marked uh and go ahead and select okay now we need to include it so that uh, Visual Studio knows, hey, now I always like to rebuild after we uh, do something like that. So we'll do using and we'll do newt uh, json. So double click the search. Now what we're going to do um, is one, let's go back to the main page real quick just so we can see. Uh, we've created this which is the number slash hexadecimal that you would put in for the MAC address. We want only six characters because the API we're using uh, just requires that really. And as you see I put this phony information in here um, and the only reason I did that is so I could visually see what I was doing and what will input. So this is what it will look like uh, once it's done. That's what we've called it as right so but when they click the button we want to do error control all the time and uh, you know what else we're gonna put in instead of using web client I want everybody to start doing this uh, because it will make your app go super super fast but we want sharp GIS gzip web client. You're using uh, GS, sharp GS, um, and just like that. So now let's process the search, right? Uh, and this uh, makes the web client. Uh, which you'll understand in a few moments. So now we're going to actually use this web client. Um, so let's go ahead and do tab twice. One, two. And now you see it was nice. It created this little uh, uh, thing for us. But let's go ahead and close this bracket just so we don't see any errors. So right here, we're basically saying, uh, once download, go here, right? Um, so we'll now have to tell it where to go. And this is basically saying, hey, I have something for you to run, right? Um, so I have an API here that we're going to use, and you're more than welcome to use it. 
which is this from macvendorlookup.com. And now right here is where we would be searching for the six uh, digits slash hexadecimal, whatever the input is going to be. And go to this API, right? So, but here's the thing. What if they didn't put six characters? Well, obviously you would get an error. And again, we want to reduce as many possible errors. So now we're uh, already got the API. We assume that the length was proper. So now let's make sure uh, what it's downloaded. Well, isn't null. So we'll do if e dot error is not null. Um, then we'll go ahead. And now we want to put return because we don't want anything to occur after that. It's based off of this specific API that you could do this. Okay, so now let's do a var JSON, uh, which again, you want to remember what your things are. And we're going to do result because that's what we want to, well, result. And now we need a class here uh, based off of our... Um, uh, what's it called? Our API. I already have one that I created for my other project. So now we'll do Mac class. Oops, Mac lookup dot Mac class root object, and then we'll do root object. So we're defining the root object for it. And now we're going to say our feed, which is JSON, because we've defined that right here. As you see, it's highlighted. As you see, it's very simple. So far, three lines of code here. And that's basically taking the feed that came in. We're saying, hey, take the feed result and let's uh, put it as a var for JSON. Uh, we're going to use our uh, Mac class, which is right here. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and look at the Mac class. As you see, it says Mac Lookup. That's a mistake because this is our project name. But because it came from my other project, that's why it says that. I could change it, of course, but we're not going to. So now that we have our root object, let's go ahead and fill in the results. So we'll do root object, and as you see, now we're getting stuff from our Mac class. So these are the items from the API. So we'll start with the uh, company. So now right here we're saying if it's not empty, let's go ahead and make text company dot text the incoming uh, you know this deserialized item, uh, which would be the company from the API. So we go here and we just will look where that's going to go so we can visually know. Okay, where it says Dell Computers since that's text company. Very simple, right? So now we'll put else. And that will do it for that, and that'll get you the company. 
right? And because now we've put a canvas here, and the reason I put a canvas is because this is our search results. And as you see, if I deleted it, it would be gone. So now, when we start the program, which main page means the main things that are going to start up. So we can do can results dot visibility equals visibility dot collapse, meaning close, and visible would be obviously visible, right? So here we technically have a working uh, program. So we'll go ahead and launch her up. And as you see here, we don't have the results anymore. That canvas, I can click whatever I want, it's gone, right? Uh, and that's because of what we've done right here. So now if we go ahead and type search, oh, sorry, not gonna work because we don't have six characters. All right, so now we'll go ahead and do C, and we'll go ahead and press search. Oh, you know why we're having a problem, guys? Because Lance is a little bit stupid. Here's our problem, right? Uh, can the results visibility equals visibility dot visible. That's why we had a problem, folks. Wow. How sad, right? That was a big no-no on my part, huh? See, you try to be fancy and you get slapped in the face. <laughs> so, B0... D0. But the good news, it did work, and we know that because it didn't crash on us, and we'll prove it. So now, by pressing search, we should see the company name. And voila. Uh, obviously, uh, the search results for is incorrect, um, which w the reason that is is because we didn't put that uh, capability in. But as you see, Samsung Electronics Co. LTD. That's absolutely correct. This Microsoft way, etc., is absolutely incorrect. This is not the, the uh, Samsung information, obviously. Probably be China. Uh, but as you see, we told it to put in the root object, which we got from our class file right here. Um, and as you see, but it did get the company correct because that's from my Samsung uh, Focus Flash. Anyways, guys, this source code will be available for all you XDA people. Look in the form uh, for the Windows Phone 7 development. And uh, I will actually fill in the rest of the coding for you guys um, and get you out of here. But thank you so much for watching and uh, Lance Seidman for XDA TV.